Here we go, it's last week at the auction, America's favorite top 10 list of auction results from around the globe. All hands selected by me, Josh Levine, your host and guide to the world of auctions, and this is episode nine of season three, and it continues to be the hottest YouTube series in the entire world. Okay, the auction world. But now, with over 10,000 subscribers and 1 million views, just what are you waiting for? There's plenty of room, so just jump on the bandwagon now, because I got another great show for you today, packed with amazing auction results, fun facts, and so much more. Because what do I always tell you? Nothing is more interesting than the world of auctions. Not even that goopy glop stuff in lava lamps. So, before you go, subscribe below. So come on, let's all learn something from what happened last week at the auction. All right, I'm gonna get this one out of the way. Coming in at number 10 is an antique funeral post-mortem photograph that sold for $280 at Matthew Bullock Auctioneer. I know, I know, you're like, hey Josh, why did you have to show that to us? Well, it's just for the little quick history lesson. You know, as soon as photography became a thing, this was one of the most popular subjects, and for several reasons. You know, people couldn't easily travel to a funeral or a viewing to pay their respects. Also, death was much more commonplace, and this would not have been considered morbid. And also, photography was very expensive, so you may not even have ever had your picture taken during your lifetime, so this was kind of like your final hurrah. Have you ever paid for a funeral? It's about half the price of a wedding. Did I say happy holidays yet? All right, coming in at number nine, this is a fun one, is an Hermes cashmere and silk scarf that brought $650 at Hindeman. I want you to keep an eye out for these and it's why I feature them. I have found stashes of these in estate drawers and as you can see, it's like finding cash. Look for this signature. See, this type of goodie goes in my don't dump out the drawers for donations before you have a really good look. Number eight, it's a set of three Palo Solari wind chime bells that brought $650 also at Hindemith. If you're not familiar with these, have a look at their distinctive style. We find these all over the desert southwest, but many families don't know what they are. Mom or dad might have got them as a gift or purchased them at the artist shop here in Scottsdale. And when the family comes to sell the house or have an estate sale, they just leave them with the house or sell them for five or 10 bucks not knowing. These are easily $100 each and the larger babies, pow, big bucks. Number seven is a wonderful Mountain Dew tin litho sign that brought $3,000 Canadian at Miller & Miller. Did you know that Mountain Dew had a hillbilly mascot? This circa 1967 find is a highly coveted piece by the collectors of advertising. By the way, his name was Willie and the original slogan was, it'll tickle your innards. Not today's slogan, it'll give you diabetes. Number six, a Lions Club Pez dispenser just brought $3,325 at archive auction. When I was just with Steve Ruth, he told me about this sale and I was floored. Plus he said it had noted condition issues but with this extreme rarity, the bidders didn't care. They just wanted their candy. All right, I've never seen this one before. Number five was an amazing pair of Barbie and Ken store display mannequins that brought $5,000 Canadian at Miller & Miller. Circa 1960 and very rare, these would be quite the showstopper in anybody's Barbie or serious pop culture collection. Be on the lookout. They were made for department stores, so there must be more of them out there. All right, number four is a 1959 Rolex Explorer that just did $9,000 at Freeman's. I point this one out for a few reasons. Note, it was stainless steel and very unassuming besides the name. Many of these hard to find models like this command more than the solid gold versions as watch collectors are looking for these rare examples of mid-century classic timepieces. You know, I've seen supposed expert jewelers snub their noses at these because they are stainless, not knowing the hidden value. All right, number three is a Skagel Hunter knife with its original sheath that sold for $17,000 at Morphe. Now that's a knife. These early 20th century knives were exclusive to Abercrombie & Fitch, but in the 1930s and during the start of the Great Depression, the retailer asked Skagel to cut corners and make their knives cheaper so people could afford them. They refused to lower their standards and just went solo. So look for this mark because you got 17,000 reasons to find one. 
All right, I love this one. Number two is an Amphora Dragon Vase that hammered for $44,000 at Morphe's. Called the Spitting Coin Dragon, it stood 21 inches tall. The turn templates mark gave it away, to those in the know, because some of the finest Nouveau vases are by this bohemian maker, and I get giddy when I find this mark. But here's today's number one. A Harry Bertoia multi-plane construction just sold for $70,000 at Wright. Standing at 47 inches tall and totally classic Bertoia, I once sold a similar example to this for over $100,000. It was a little larger for a family, and the reason I bring it up is because the family that was selling it thought it was some kind of clothes drying rack as it had been in the family's laundry room for years. Isn't that crazy? Next time you see one, you'll know what it is, and don't throw your towels on it. And now you know what happened last week at the auction. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the show, before you go, subscribe below. It's free. Give me a thumbs up and be sure to post a comment or a question, and be sure to check out all the great auction houses I talked about in today's show. And thanks to the lucky odds of San Antonio fame for allowing me to use their hit song, Whiprash. Check them out at theluckyodds.com. Until next week or last week at the auction.